Hi, and welcome to CyberTalk. My name is Don Meyer. Today we're going to be talking with John Oltsik. He's a senior principal analyst at ESG Group. And John, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure, Don. We're going to talk a little bit about the cloud and what the cloud has been doing and really be good to start at what is the cloud? You know, how do organizations define the cloud and what are people really doing in the cloud these days? Well, the cloud virtualizes. I mean, the typical definition is that the cloud virtualizes compute, storage, and networking. Uh, you can use a public cloud or a private cloud. You can use a hybrid method where you're using both. What they're doing in the cloud is pretty much everything. Uh, we see people moving large files to the cloud. We see them moving uh, analytics applications where they can get a lot of compute power to the cloud. And we see them just moving pedestrian applications there so that they can cut costs and uh, operational overhead. With respect to security, how would you define the state of uh, cloud security these days? How mature do you think it is? And, and what are some of the common areas that, that organizations are struggling with with respect to cloud security? You know, I would say it's way more mature than people think. Uh, what, what has to happen though is you have to develop this mindset that it's not what you've known in the past. So you have to adopt your processes, adopt your controls, uh, and then develop a, a good model for monitoring in the cloud, and then figure out how to link that to what you've done historically, because you don't want to reinvent the wheel here. Sure. Uh, but if you do that and you seek out good cloud, you know, uh, cloud security solutions that were designed for the cloud, you don't try to force fit old security controls, um, you can be very well, you can be very successful there. We've talked a little bit about hybrid, we talked about private, talked about public. Could you elaborate a little bit more on what the security differences are between those different infrastructures? Well, in the private cloud, you control everything. So you can do some things to lock things down. You can also, uh, you're choosing your cloud platform. So you can choose the appropriate cloud platform that provides the security control or the security visibility that you want. In the public cloud, you don't get to choose. You get mm -hmm. to choose the cloud, cloud service, but you have to uh, use cloud controls, cloud technologies that support that. And each cloud provider has different security services they provide natively, different visibility they provide natively, different APIs, and different information you can get from those APIs. Sure. So that's what makes it challenging is Azure is going to be different than AWS. But if you're using both, you have to you don't want two different security models. You want a single security model that supports all those environments. Excellent point. And you know, along those same lines, when looking at public cloud offerings, you hear a lot about this shared responsibility model. And yes. there are certain things to your point that the cloud providers will do in terms of providing a reliable, available infrastructure. But there are also other things that customers must do to be able to make sure so that their data and their workloads are, are secure and protected. Do you find that there's some ambiguity still with respect to how organizations or how customers are looking at that shared responsibility model and what they're doing to, to overcome some of those, those challenges? Yes, because uh, in the security world, we tend to manage the world from the infrastructure up. Right. So, and in fact, where do most dollars go? They go to network security. Yep. But in the cloud world, you're really dealing with, uh, because the infrastructure is shared, you're really dealing at security from the application down. So you have to go in with that mindset. You have to look at what workloads you want to protect. What do, what do the workloads do? Who do they, what other workloads do, are, uh, do they talk to? Um, who accesses those workloads? What kind of oversight, what kind of threats are there to those workloads? If you do that, you should be okay. If you go in thinking about networks and network segmentation and firewalling, I mean, all those things are important to understand in a cloud world, but understand them in, in the cloud uh, design and the cloud model not in the old model. So essentially, you know, like any other IT you know, related project, start at the basics, understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish and make sure that you're putting in place the necessary measures, both from a security and from a compute and storage uh, that are going to help you to, uh, to achieve those, those goals and ultimately you know, get uh, the most out of that infrastructure. Beyond that, what are some other areas that you can help guide organizations who are you know, still kind of testing the waters and or, or looking to maybe expand their, their footprint in the cloud a little bit more? I think what I just mentioned is really important. And that is, you're looking at a business process or an application. So, who accesses that? What types of threats can you anticipate there? What does that 
workload need to communicate with. So again, just thinking in terms uh, at a higher level. Um, but really, it, if, if you think about it, Don, uh, in a cloud world, in a mobile world, where there is no real perimeter, you're thinking about really controlling access to an application. So that's sort of an identity-centric model. And then you're thinking about protecting the application and the data behind it. So you do have some flexibility to, to actually layer on some controls and some visibility to do things that we really couldn't do in the past or that were much too difficult, required much too, uh, too much engineering to do. So I'd say take advantage of it and, and really the most advanced use case is figure out how you can improve security by using the cloud, not just emulate security. Organizations that are looking to, again, make that leap in, in a very significant way. Uh, security, is it still one of those areas that we're not quite 100% sure on? Uh, the, there's a lot of you know, noise and buzz and, and confusion that's out there. Are organizations coming to you with specific security questions? And if so, what are those questions that they're asking about? Yeah, so first of all, security is not an inhibitor anymore. The business people are saying there are too many benefits here. Um, you security people need to figure this out. And so they're doing that. The questions that people have are really what's cloud appropriate. Mm -hmm. So if we have, so for instance, if we do network, network segmentation in our on-site data center, how do we do that appropriately in the cloud? Can we do things that we can't do easily on premise with physical infrastructure in the cloud? And the good part of this is the answer is yes, that there are kind of software-defined tools that give you some flexibility to do things quickly, to align, and this is an important point, aligning with the automation of cloud application, um, not, not only application development, but things like DevOps, so that as people are putting applications, workloads in the cloud, there's the appropriate security controls associated with that right from the provisioning time. Sure. And then the other thing that's important is you need to understand the behavior of the cloud behavior of cloud workloads, behavior of cloud applications talking to each other. So we tell people to monitor the situation first, understand what the traffic patterns are, what um, types of security you need, and then go ahead and implement the, the right controls afterwards. Excellent. Final thoughts, uh, state of cloud security today. What, uh, what are your thoughts around that? Well, things are evolving quickly. The, the biggest challenge, I'll say this, is uh, in a heterogeneous environment. So I've got on-prem, I've got my private cloud, and we used to think of hybrid, so private and public. But what's happening is we've got a private cloud. We may have a few. We may have OpenStack, and we may have some VMware right. on, on site. And then we, we're working with AWS. Now we're working with Azure, too. Google Cloud is coming on board. IBM Cloud. So how do you manage security across all of those environments with some kind of central policy, with consistent controls? That's the big challenge, and that's a, that's a developing area. But you need to work with, with uh, security vendors who can support all that, give you the type of policy, um, central policy and some central oversight, and support some of your legacy environment as well. Great. Thanks, John. Really appreciate the insights. And to follow John, his Twitter handle is at J-O-L-T-S-I-K. Thanks again.